there is power in the Word of God, a power to change your life and transform your life to become like Christ. There is power in praising God, a power that opens the gates of heaven for the blessings of God to be poured down into your life. There is power in Bible study. It opens the eyes of your understanding to see what Christ has done for you on the cross. This is CFR 2021. It's a season of having abundance for every good work. It's time for you to listen to the Word of God. Lord, we trust that you are ever the same. Thank you for the worship session and that you have removed the barricade, the obstacle of our ways. Glory be to your name. We ask, dear Lord, may you have your way. Lord, we are here. To receive abundance from you. May you release to us by mercy. Amen. Thank you because you are faithful. We trust that you will not waste our coming. Amen. Glory be to your name. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. I welcome you to this CFR 2021 in the name of the Lord and I trust that God's power will be available to bless you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. That is the team test for this meeting. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. Please open your Bible to Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. This is just an opening charge and it's just for a few minutes, trusting the Lord to open the meeting with us by his grace and power. Are you already in Second Corinthians chapter 9? Alright, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. May the Lord bless and increase this word in our lives in the name of Jesus. Um, the body in the heart of God is about our ill condition. What's the troubles that many of us who are going through, if you have the opportunity to have our flyer, we, we printed our, the body that God gave to us, that over the years, many who have experienced the saving grace have not come into the fullness of the package Christ offers in salvation. Many who are genuinely born again and uh, who have been in the church for many years live in penury. Many are living in poor health and many are living in demonic bondages of all sorts. And unfortunately, many believers have sought deliverance in different ways and uh, different means. Yet, the situation persists. Some settled for pseudo-peace and the comfort 
that in much tribulation, they will see the kingdom of God. They choose to endure their way through, but never take cognizance of the fact that their portion of feed and vineyard in God had grown weeds and thorns as a result of neglect. Majority of believers did not even know the primary reason for being saved is not just to make heaven, but to do the good works ordained for them to do. So many are ignorant of the assignment God decided in eternity, which made them descend from eternity to time. So this lack of discovery is a major being of real living, which makes majority of believers to a sixty only, but never leave. God in mercy uh, have seen this our terrible predicament and he has come in mercy to intervene. And I pray that your own case shall be settled in Jesus' name. Amen. The few who understand their assignments in the feed and the vineyard of God could not survive in their work, let alone thrive in their ordained path. So there are a lot of abandoned good works and the ordained beneficiaries suffer untold woes for many years because those who have them on their portion are impoverished as regard grace to deliver the mandate. God had provided all that we need for life and godliness in Christ Jesus. All the resources we need is embedded in grace. But it must multiply if our lack shall be terminated. And so, the whispering of the Holy Spirit came to our heart and that whispering of the Holy Spirit but this CFR 2021. Let me read the Amplified of the text I've read in King James in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Say, and God is able to make all grace and grace in this balance means every faithful and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be, self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable charitable donation. Beloved, the first matter that the Lord brought to me, which I want to share quickly, and which is going to be a matter of the message this evening. Why? Do we live in penury? Why do we live in penury? Why do we have God of abundance who asks all powers And who is the source of all resources? 
spiritual resources, physical resources, emotional resources, material resources, all resources. God is the source. Why would you have that God, your father, and you will be living in penury? You know, about two days ago, I was in bed, and I remember, I remember a, a, an event in my life. I was thinking, I remember when I was in primary school, I was ruminating about the theme of this meeting, having abundance for every good work. Having abundance, having abundance. Why do we live in penury? You know, when I was in primary school, my mom was this food vendor. The school vendor. So, that, you know, I don't think I've ever shared that story with anybody. Me, I forgot it. It was while I was reading it, the Lord just made me to realize. You know, whenever it is break time, so once I pull my plate like this, I will have in excess. My mom will bring, you know, she sold rice, <laughs> plantain, and beans. So I will have with, with fish. That made me to have many friends. <laughs> and you know, some of my friends, they will now send me to go and buy, to, to, I should go and help and buy. And you know, as just as though they knew what they were going to get. Once I appear before my mom, he knew, she knew that I've gotten my own. I said, I want to buy. Ah, Jima, Utvera. I said, I'm one of my friends. You know, once I announce the amount like this, it's times two of what they will normally get. And, and I, I think like that for three years when I was in primary school. I was rich in food. And I was rich in friends. Now, I don't need to talk just to appear before my mom. Why would you be appearing before God? And you'll be praying. Me, I will not pray. I will not pray. I just appear before my mom. Just stretch forth my plate. She knew my capacity for food. Ah, you don't. Do you know my alias when I was small? Me, you know me. That was my alias. So she knew the measure that that will feed me, and she also knew that. There are friends, you know, you will always have to go friends. <laughs> that once I'm coming like this, they will bombard me. Yet, I must be full. Please, are you following me? Why do we live in penury? If my mom that the Bible called wicked. Do you know that the Bible called us wicked people? That if you wicked people know how to give good gifts to your own children. So if my mom who was a wicked woman could be so caring not only for me, that even when I appear before her, for another person's sake, that 
person automatically share from my abundance. Oh God. I don't know if you are following me. Why do we live in penury? In the beginning, before God created man, he made all things that man needed. And he created it, he created them in abundance. He had prepared all of all the things that man needed before the man was made. And he didn't need to run a skater to get them. In fact, God brought Adam where those riches, those abundance were lying. Where he kept them. And in the same way, God has also provided all that the new creation needed both for life and godliness before we ever came to Christ. Before we were born again. Before we knew God. God has been good ever before the, the world began. God has been so good even before heaven began. Now for all new creation, all that we need there for life and godliness, God has provided. In John chapter 10 verse 10, Jesus Christ announced to us, he said, the son of man came so that you might have life and that you might have life in abundance. By implication, abundance is our heritage. And Jesus Christ he taught us about prayer. He said, ask shall be given. Now he concluded. He said, whosoever that ask, we always have. Whosoever that knock, the door shall be opened to him. And whosoever that seek, we always find. And in Ephesians 3.20, the scripture says that and God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we ask or think. You know, after you have prayed and you have spent qualitative time in prayer, and God really helped you to pray. And you have a witness in your spirit that God has heard your prayer. Do you know that your mind continues to pray? Sometimes you might not even begin to pray physically. In your mind, you are thinking prayer. How many of you have that attitude of thinking prayer? Yeah. Who think prayer. You desire and you desire and you desire. You sometimes your mind, your your lips might not talk. But for some of us that our body has been accustomed to prayer, you see that you see our legs shaking like this. Some are used to doing like this. Uh, some, some, some they do you know they don't just want to appear to you uh, religious, but in their mind, their mind continues to pray. God promised abundance of answers to our request. Now with all of this, why do we 
live in penury. If anyone is here that is saved, you are saved by grace. How many of you know that you are saved by grace? It's not by the works of righteousness, but by grace alone. Now, if you are saved by grace, it means a quantum of grace has been deposited into your life. Do you follow me? Okay. Now, the test for this CFR now say, God is able to make all grace abound. God is the multiplier of grace. And he's ready to multiply our grace. Such that we shall not lack anything. Or need not to beg for support in doing good works that God has ordained for us. You know, many of us, the way we were when, when we got born again, what we met in the church is that the work of God is suffering. And the suffering is lack. And indeed, our pastors, they didn't tell us lies. And you know, if you have a transparent pastor, he will tell you how he suffers. And if you are the type that Grace is surging out of your life. And, they are, and they begin to notice that um, you might end up being in the ministry. It will discourage you not to do ministry. Or advise you that if you are going to do ministry, make sure that you have you have additional business that will pay your bill so that you will not face the terrible lack. Now listen. The desire that the work of God should suffer, but you should enjoy. Hello? Are you with me? So for you not to suffer, They will advise you what to do. But listen. I want you to get something. Ministry is not what you think. The matter here in this meeting is good works. You might like to enjoy penury. And I don't think any sensible man will love to live in penury. Me, I hate poverty. What about you? Eh? Ha. Ah. Me, I suffer small. I suffer small. I suffer small. I've been a full-time minister. For the, for the past 27 years. So, I suffer small. Full time. God didn't allow me to do business. So, I was like that. But listen. Why do we live in penury? Majority of us live in abject poverty. You know, it is because we don't do poor men association. If there is an association of poor men 
and there is a either monthly meeting. Don't let us convey weekly meeting. If it is monthly meeting, and they ask each of them to give report of what happened in their home, it is then we know the chiefest. And the chief first supposed to be the chairman. <laughs> I pray God will deliver us. Some of us live in poor health. Not all of us we are sound. Not all of us are sound in health. Some people visit hospital weekly. Some monthly. Some actually they have made hospital to be their home. And they are believers in Christ. And we have some believers that their lives are full of demonic bondages of all sorts. They are in bondage. <laughs> Naturally, anyone that is born to this world, Job 14 verse 1, there is a natural fact that we cannot ignore. Job 14 verse 1. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Full of trouble. Full of trouble. Trouble of poverty. Trouble of poor head, trouble of demonic bondages, and sometimes we are in this terrible condition because of our personal sin. In John chapter 5, verse 14. When Jesus Christ opened that blind man, that man that was born blind, you remember that man? When Jesus came to this man and he healed him, he said something. No, sorry. John, I said John 5, 14. That, that crippled man at Pool of Bethsaida. Uh, yeah, Pool of Bethsaida. Aha. Jesus said to him, afterward, Jesus finded him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. By implication, the lameness that came to that man for 38 years was as a result of his personal sin. Why? Do we live in penury? And there was this attack of Satan that came upon this daughter of Zion in Luke 13, verse 16. That woman that was born, that was bent for 18 years. She was like that for 18 years. Why? Jesus said, Satan bound him. One can be born again and also be in bondage. Beloved, I sense that God wants to heal our land. I sense that God wants to heal our land this evening. God wants to heal our life this evening. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 13 to 14 
God says, if I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locust to defer the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Please, are you following me? Please let me take that verse 13 again. Because I know it is Second Chronicles 7, 14 that we normally read. We don't normally read verse 13. Now, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Please don't forget my illustration. Why do we live in penury? Why do we appear before God and we never receive abundance? Why? I told you, when my mom was the food vendor in my school, in my primary school, I had food. My friends were multiplied, and they had food. And I did not need to explain anything. Just to appear before her. I don't need to bring any money. Once it is for me. Do you remember in Isaiah, God said, come and buy me without price. Eh? Isaiah 55 verse 1. So God said, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to defraud the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. In this context of the scripture, devil is not in the scene. The enemies in our father's house and in our mother's house, they are not on the scene. God said, if I shot and the only person that can shut heaven over us is God. He said, if I command the locusts to defraud the land, that locusts will not come to defraud your life if God has not commanded them. Heaven will not lock over you. No devil on heart can lock your heaven. There is no principality, no power of hell that can shut heaven over you. God says, if I shut up heaven and I say, let there be no rain. And once there is no rain, where will you get abundance? Or God allowed the, your heaven to remain open and you planted and there was rain. Baba now said, if I command the locusts to defraud the land, huh? If I send pestilence. Now, now listen. If I send pestilence among eh? among why? My people. Not sinners. Not wicked men. Over the years, many believers have had their lives lived under locked heaven. 
Some six, they have ever believed. They have never lived under open heaven. So if you have never lived under open heaven, there is no need for God to send locusts to defer what? But listen, lock heaven is accompanied with pestilence. Please listen. Why do we live in penury? Why do we have God that is so good as a father? Who is the source of all resources. And yet we lack everything. Below, we lack everything. Even the salvation many of us claim that we have. If we bring it under the standard of the scriptures you discover that you have no salvation experience. Why do we follow the Lord and we never enjoy good health? Oh, I had a foster father. Who took care of me for almost um, now I stayed under his roof approximately 15 years. Now after I left, I grew up. He still remained my foster father. I'm trying to calculate how many years I knew this man. 1974 to 2014. How many years is that? Eh? 74 to 2014. Is it 40 or 30? Eh? 40 years. I never see that man to swallow drug. He was a CNS prophet. He never swallowed tablet. I think I was, yes, I was to preach in Lagos. And I had a call. They told me that your father is in hospital. I said, this man is ready home. Because that I never hear. I never seem to swallow drug. Let a low you will sleep on hospital bed. You know, just as I predicted, immediately they took him to the hospital. Once his body touches hospital bed, he gave up the ghost. He lived a very long life with a strong strength. Rabbi may say no demand. If we are walking like this, I'll be running after him. He was not literate. But he knew Bible. You know when he is quoting scriptures? I'll be asking him. Sir, why, how did you know what you know? He said, ah. he said they put Bible in my head. From Genesis to Revelation, he'll be quoting scriptures. Now, what led me there is that you that you say you believe gospel, their faith was the faith of CNS.
I don't know the kind of Pentecostal that you belong. Why do we believe so much and yet we live in penury? Bow your girl head, let's pray. We will listen to choir. Now bow your head, let's pray. Lord, open my eyes. God, you must diagnose my case for me today. Yes, diagnose my case. Diagnose my case for me tonight. My coming must not be a waste. Diagnose my case. Diagnose my case for me. By the spirit of revelation. From your word. From your word, Lord. From your word, Lord. Diagnose my case. Let me know why my life is like this. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray.